Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Prakash Kripakaran. I'm a civil engineering academic uh, in the department. Uh, my interests are broadly in the design and management of civil infrastructure. Uh, in particular, I'm interested in what happens to bridges during uh, extreme floods. And uh, we are going to do a short experiment uh, that, you know, to demonstrate how we uh, analyze what happens to bridges under these circumstances. Here we have a large hydraulic flume. Uh, flume is essentially a large uh, water tank where you can simulate fluid flows uh, of different discharges and different uh, water heights. Uh, we have a pump that bas basically drives the flow, so we can use the pump to increase the flow rate as well as adjust the flow height in the tank. Uh, we use this kind of a flume specifically to look at what happens to structures that are in the water course. So in this case, we have a model of a bridge. Uh, so in this case, a model of a masonry arch bridge in particular. And we are interested in understanding what happens to uh, the bridge under extreme floods, uh, particularly when the bridge gets inundated. And we have set up the flow conditions for that purpose. Uh, we, will so we will show some measurements, uh, trying to illustrate what happens to the flow as we increase the flow rates. Pumps now running and the water is uh, flowing in the tank. Uh, the water itself is not clear on purpose, so we have added some particles to the water so that we can actually measure velocities. If the, if the water is very clear, we can't measure velocities using the instrument we have. So we need to add some particles to make it dirty, essentially, so that we can pick up velocities. And uh, we have set the flow up at a very low discharge. Uh, so we can see that there is not a lot of turbulence down the, uh, near the bridge. Here we have a traverse system on which is mounted an instrument for measure, measuring flow velocities. So the traverse can move in all three directions, X, Y, and Z. So we can, in principle, measure anywhere within the flow volume. We can measure velocities in three dimensions, anywhere within the flow volume in the tank. We are just going to move the traverse to show what happens. So here we have three sets of dies set up. So these are just dies which will dip into the drop into the water and they'll be transported by the flow and they can be indicative of the flow structures. So they can indicate if the flow is uh, laminar, smooth, or if it's turbulent, for example. So we should be able to see that at low flow rates, the flow is very smooth. At high flow rates, the flow becomes very, very turbulent, particularly near the bridge structure, which is where we'll try and focus on. So as the flow approaches the bridge, particularly the abutments, the flow is stopped. And when the flow is stopped, it has to turn. It also has to rush downward. And these two phenomena, they basically cause a lot of turbulence, which leads to vortices. So you get vortex structures in front of the abutments. And similarly, when the flow rushes out of the bridge, you know, behind it, on the downstream side, the flow similarly breaks off from the bridge. And that causes eddies on the abutments, you know, behind the abutments of the bridge. Both of these are phenomena are very important from the point of erosion. So the turbulent structures basically erode the sediment at the base of the foundation of the bridge. And the erosion of the sediment is one of the major causes of bridge failures. So the key risk to bridge structures during a flood event is loss of support from foundations of bridge structures. And the loss of foundation is essentially due to sediment being taken away by the flow. And understanding how the flow uh, evolves as it flows through the bridge is critical for us to understand what happens at the base of the piers. And that's why we run these kinds of experiments to basically get an understanding of the flow characteristics as well as erosion. And then we use this information to both design bridges as well as to manage structures, as well as to understand how we can retrofit them or repair them so that they are protected from flood events.